Hello, welcome to the Friday, December 22nd, 2017 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Remember how many issues we had with SMB version 1 this year? Well, and uh, prior years, uh, there is one more bug that you probably need to fix rather quickly if you're running Dell EMC storage gear. Turns out the data domain deduplication and data protection software suffers from a critical memory overflow vulnerability that can lead possibly to remote code execution, but almost certainly to a denial of service against affected devices. Affected are pretty much all current versions of a data domain DDoS. This includes the 5.76061 families of this software. Also, if you're running the data domain virtual edition, then 203031 are all affected. So at the very least, before you head home for the holidays, double check that you have firewall rules preventing access via SMB to these devices from the outside. This particular flaw does not require authentication. No exploit has been released up to this point, but uh, who knows, people are probably working on it already. And ever received an email from Facebook and you weren't quite sure if this is an authentic email from Facebook or not? Well, uh, Facebook now introduced a new feature that helps you make that decision. If you go to settings in Facebook and then select security and login at the very bottom of the page, you'll find a new item that lists all recent emails sent by Facebook. So here you can review whether or not that password reset or whatever you received was an actual Facebook message or not. There are two categories here. It will list any security related emails that were sent over the last two weeks or other emails, which are sort of the standard notifications about you being mentioned and the like, which are being displayed for the last two days. And even though the prices for cryptocurrencies have lost quite a bit of value the last couple days, attacks against crypto related sites continue. The latest example here is Ether Delta, an Ethereum trading platform that apparently had a compromised DNS server earlier. It isn't clear what or if anything happened during this attack, but the DNS service in charge of EtherDelta.com were under the control of an attacker. There are only a couple tweets about this so far, so not a lot of details, but apparently the attacker did redirect traffic to an alternative app. And now the alternative app, app had a couple of differences from the actual app, like no chat button, but other than that, apparently was intended to be a lookalike of the main site. And as a reminder, today's diary also deals with the security of crypto coin wallets and how to generate, for example, paper wallets in order to keep your crypto coin out of the reach of attackers. And German security company Cure53 did what looks like a pretty thorough pen test of Enigmail. Enigmail is a plugin for Thunderbird that allows you to use PGP. It's uh, out there for quite a while. I remember it from back in the day when I still used Enigmail and uh, Thunderbird. But apparently there are a couple of vulnerabilities here. Probably the most severe one allows you to spoof a sender, something that PGP is supposed to prevent. Essentially, what's happening here is that Enigmail is using the wrong key to verify the sender. One that's actually a little bit more tricky to classify as far as the severity goes is the ability to decrypt emails. Now, this actually has quite a bit of dependencies. So, of course, first of all, the attacker has to be able to record an encrypted email. What the attacker has to do next, and that's where it sort of gets a little bit tricky here, is start an email conversation with the victim. Now, somewhere throughout this email conversation, the attacker will include the encrypted copy of the email. This doesn't have to happen at the top or anywhere. This could be at the very bottom of the email. 
The recipient now, of course, will automatically decrypt that email and possibly include it in a reply that, of course, follows. Now, this has quite a bit of requirements. Now, I wonder if other encrypted email systems are vulnerable to the same flaw, where if you reply to an encrypted email, the reply isn't necessarily encrypted. That's almost true for almost any encrypted email system. The question is more with these partial encrypted emails, how they're dealing with that. Well, and this is it for today. As I mentioned yesterday, due to the holidays uh, this coming week, I'll probably not have a podcast until Tuesday, January the 2nd. I may do one next week, Wednesday, Thursday. We'll see how much uh, news there actually is. It's usually a pretty slow time of the year Anyway, that's it. Thanks for listening and I always appreciate if you share this podcast with your friends or enemies for that matter. And I also appreciate good reviews in iTunes or any other podcast platform. Thanks and talk to you again in the new year.